And we're going to go ahead and lay this in with thickened epoxy, so let's go ahead and take care of that now. Alright, welcome back to another episode of Neon Swell. Thanks for coming to check out this boat build again. Now, if you remember from last episode, I started to create a few hatches for the inside galley. I did so using this double wide Divinicel you see here, and I ripped it using this jigsaw because I really don't know what I'm doing. I then moved to the inside of the boat to add a few support members for the outside bed extension, which will reside under the outside foot indent. I moved on to create a few shelves under the V-berth for extra storage. I then wrapped everything up by starting the process for the outside pulpit. Now if you're new to my channel, I'd like to persuade you to hit that subscribe button and maybe give this video a thumbs up if you like it. And if you'd like to see this channel succeed in the future, I started a Patreon account where you can go and help donate towards this build. You'll instantly become one of my best friends. And if you're still on the fence about this channel, but you really like the logo, you can head over to neonswell.com and pick yourself up a few stickers. And if you don't want to become a patron or buy any stickers, then you can just Enjoy the rest of the episode. Alright, so I'm back on the boat today, and the other day I was taking a look at some of the front pulpit rigging that I have over there. You might have seen a few of the clips, but I ran into a whole bunch of issues trying to get the right size stainless steel bolts to go through the rigging. Um, I went back and forth to the hardware store, and all in all, it took me about six hours to get that all done. You might have saw some of the clips, but my GoPro ended up running out of battery. So um, now today I'm starting to take a look at some of the other hardware that I have out here. Uh, I have some of the chain plates and the rigging hardware as well as the lifelines. I'm going to go take a look at that now. Uh, I have some chain plates up there right now. Let's go ahead and take a look at everything and uh, take a look at the front pulpit as well. So here you can see the front pulpit. I ended up 5200ing all the stainless on and then bolting these things down real tight so it oozed out and then cleaned everything up. I put this oak platform on there to be sort of an extension of the boat and I think it's going to be a cool spot to go sit when uh, the boat's under anchor or even underway in the river or something like that. But yeah, this thing is super solid. I can go ahead and stand on this thing and um, it holds my weight just fine. So here's the chain plate that I was talking about for both the port and starboard side of the boat. I already went ahead and cut a lot of the holes and fit everything in there. I have to go ahead and fit, fill that in with the thickened epoxy, but this fits in there pretty well. And I'll go ahead and put some of that hardware on a little later. Now I'm currently working on the port side chain plate, which is over here and epoxied onto the bulkhead. So instead of just letting this sit and rest there, I've epoxied this teak piece on there for the chain plate to bolt on. I have to go ahead and make these permanent and put some 5200 in there. I've gone ahead and done the other side here a few minutes ago and that's uh, currently drying but that thing's stuck there for good so let's go ahead and take care of this other chain plate and see if we can get this uh, finished up.
I finished up on the port chain plate then showed you guys a little bit of the front deck hardware that I had attached for the pulpit the day before. Again this was a huge pain as the depth of the core had changed and I had to go back and forth to the hardware store to get the proper size stainless and then move to the outside deck to work on the chain plate covers for both the port and starboard side. Now I had to drill a few holes and then backfill with thickened epoxy to keep the inside core away from the moist outside environment. And this process eventually led to creating the outside mounting points for the four stanchions. So you can see the technique of using the bent allen key to help dig out some of the core so that I can backfill with thickened epoxy and then re-drill holes to help protect the internal core from any water intrusion. So after the first stanchion holes were created, I go ahead and do one more, then finish the remaining two off camera. I eventually fill these newly created holes with thickened epoxy so I can go ahead and tap them the next day and permanently install these stanchions. Okay, so it's another day here on the boat and I believe we last left off with me drilling the holes for the handrails on the outside of the boat here. Now there's four locations on the boat where these handrails need to go and I've gone ahead and filled it with, uh, filled the holes with thickened epoxy so that I can drill through and not expose the internal core to uh, the outside environment and that'll keep it a little bit more waterproof. And then uh, I'll go ahead and take some 5200 once I finish sanding all these down and apply the handrails uh, to each location on the boat. So let's go ahead and take care of that today. Okay, so I have everything laid out for attaching the handrails. As you can see here, the 5200, the handrail itself, and the four bolts that have to go in. Let's go ahead and uh, take care of that now.
So after finishing the stanchions, I worked myself back to a project that I had started in the previous clips, and that involved creating some shelves for inside the hatches and uh, some miscellaneous spots inside the boat. What I'm also working on today is I have some of the templates here for inside the shelf area that I didn't catch on, on camera, but uh, I have to cut some of those out of the foam core and I'll do a few of those out of plywood as well. So as with most ideas on this boat, I was sitting inside contemplating what features I could add to further enhance some of the capabilities of this boat uh, due to the small size of it. And I decided to create shelves for various parts inside the boat um, and inside the hatches. And I'll, show, I'll go ahead and show you the exact location of these shelves in some future clips here. So here you can see the shelf for inside the dining hatch seat area. I then moved to the front V-berth to show you two more shelves that I put under the front V-berth bed. And then I move on to the galley area under the five gallon water tank holder and uh, show you the shelf here. Then move on to the second bed extension and go all the way into the back of the boat and uh, start to install the shelf for this area. So I'm back on the boat and I spared you a little bit of prep work. Not that there was a lot of prep work to do, but I went ahead and drilled a hole over here in the bulkhead. Now, as you can see, that hole is gonna be used to feed this pipe through. And what this pipe is gonna be used for is uh, some, a conduit for electrical wires. And we're gonna go ahead and lay this in with thickened epoxy. So let's go ahead and take care of that now. Um, in order for me to get this to conform to the curve, I'm going to use hot glue along the edge of the hole and see if we can get it to stick before I go ahead and put that thickened epoxy in. So let's go take care of that now. So the idea to use the hot glue gun to help conform the PVC pipe to the curve of the boat actually didn't work out that well. The hot glue peeled off the fiberglass pretty easily, so I ended up finding some miscellaneous components laying around the boat and wedged them between the shelf there and the PVC pipe to help get this pipe to conform to the curve. I then filled the remaining crack with thickened epoxy to 
permanently attach this uh, PVC pipe to the hull of the boat. So I finished adding the thickened epoxy to the crack between the PVC pipe and the hold boat. The next day this dried insanely strong and like everything on this boat became a functioning structural member of this boat. This long run of PVC pipe will act perfectly as an electrical conduit to run some hidden wires along the entire length of the boat, but you'll get a better idea of this use in the upcoming episodes. So for now, this concludes episode number 24. I thank you all for watching. Be sure and come back for next episode where I start to add the missing chain locker to the bow of the boat, which involves removing some of the newly added pulpit. Thanks again for watching and be sure and hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. And please share and like this video as it really helps this channel grow. Thanks again for watching and be sure and come back for more.